The gentleman yields back. Uh, the chair now recognizes uh, the gentlewoman from Iowa, uh, Marionette Miller Meeks, for five minutes. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm going to start out today uh, by uh, actually uh, lauding renewables, but I also want to acknowledge that sometimes we forget, and especially this administration, that renewables are more than just wind and solar. Um, my friend from the great state of Utah, Mr. Curtis, has some of the most abundant geothermal resources in the world. Like much of the Pacific Northwest, Chairwoman Rogers has abundant hydropower in the 5th District of Washington State. And in Iowa, the corn state, which is an energy state, we're proud to have abundant ethanol and biodiesel. Ethanol's use is widespread. More than 98% of gasoline in the U.S. contains some ethanol and is an option for low carbon liquid fuels. In 2022, ethanol supported more than 57,000 jobs across Iowa, generated 3.5 billion of income for Iowans and accounted for nearly 7.2 billion of the state's economy and is in fact a renewable energy source. And if we don't grow corn in Iowa or the United States, it will be grown in Brazil or in South America and they will cut down rainforest in order to plant more corn. So, Dr. Nunez, like many of my Republican colleagues, I have concerns about the war President Biden has waged on liquid fuels. There are approximately 300 million passenger vehicles in the United States that does not include logistical transport. And for a single 100-mile uh, charge for an electric vehicle, that is 30 kilowatt hours. Do the math on how much energy it would take to get a single 100-mile charge, and if we could, in fact, do that. The Biden administration's recent proposals, including its set proposal, which creates a new and statutorily unauthorized program to incorporate electric vehicles into the Renewable Fuel Standard Program, as well as its market commandeering standards for light and medium dry vehicles, are a deliberate attempt to prop up electric vehicles at the expense of American consumers and Iowa ethanol. And I say this having driven a Honda Civic Hybrid for 20 years, two of them. How will these proposals increase cost to American families? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I think if you look at the EPA's own numbers um, regarding uh, you know, uh, the improvements in fuel economy that you would need to achieve to comply with the regulatory standards, we are talking, at least for internal combustion engines, about thousands of dollars. Right? In the absence of selling electric vehicles, the price of conventional vehicles would, at a minimum, go up by about $2,000, at a minimum. You could presumably sell electric vehicles to comply with the standard. Um, however, here too, challenges persist. The economics of building electric cars are challenging, to say the least. And even when you sell cars at fifty or $60,000, we have numerous OEMs that don't make profit off those vehicles. And they are powered by what? Uh, well, of course, this would depend on which state you live in, but you know, by and large, uh, depends on the cleanliness of the grid. Some coal, some gas, uh, some renewables. So, Mr. Simmons, uh, the International Energy Agency estimated that the demand for lithium will increase by 43 times in the next 20 years, but the United States produces less than 2 percent of the global lithium supply. And because my time is running out, have all of you heard of blood diamonds? Okay. Well, there's another analogy now, and that is uh, cobalt red. Uh, and the, um, you know, the climate friendly, uh, I beg to differ with one of the witnesses, uh, of mining for cobalt, mining for rare earth is anything but environmentally friendly and also not labor friendly. Does the United States have reserves, Mr. Simmons, to meet the expected lithium demand? We don't, we don't necessarily have enough to meet the global demand. We have a decent amount of reserves in places such as Rowlett Ridge, Thacker Pass. We have large amounts of lithium reserves. The question is being able to access those reserves and whether the Biden administration will continue to stand in the way. And is slow, solely relying on allies to make up production and refining deficits a sustainable long-term strategy? And is it environmentally and labor-friendly? I mean, when the United States has some of the best environmental and labor standards in the world, any time we are exporting that, we are, export we are exporting lower environmental, lower labor standards. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I yield back my time.